Thank you. Uh, we thank God for all of you. And I release blessings. Blessings from God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. We are from Nairobi, Apostolic Faith Church, Nairobi, Bahati. We would like to thank all our friends, all of you, because of your prayers. Remember, we have the project of getting for God a largest church in Nairobi, 10,000 seater church in the city of Nairobi. It's costing us 340 million which is slightly more than $3 million, U.S. dollars. We are now paying. Yes, we are paying. The bank has issued the loan, and we are paying. This is an altar that you ever, ever speak in my life and in your life. And I would like you now, in the name of Jesus Christ, to get the bank's uh, account number is for the church and talk to God about it and do not delay and see what you can do every month until we clear. We are trusting God to clear within two years. And please, it's the covenant to work with God. And as you do it, I declare that God, you create a way of flowing, flowing blessings, financial favor. In just name, God cover you as you do it and as you join with us. And this year, in 2024, we have three meetings. One is 11th February. We are meeting in Kagudo Road, where that is opposite Comorock Junction, where now we have the promises. 11th February, that will be Saturday noon. And then 14th July, Saturday noon. And then 10th November, Saturday. The same place, 10,000 seat of premises, Nairobi, Kaguda Road. And please, those who are able to come, come. And I pray that God will quicken you. I've seen people come from U.S. just to come and get these blessings. People come from far. I declare revelation. I destroy darkness. I destroy every lie. And release the truth of this work to you. And the Lord cover you as you do it. Please join us and give. I'm asking you not to miss this chance. 10,000 seater church sanctuary and altar must have an impact on your life and your family. Do it for God's glory. Now we'd like to go to the other part of this message. A clear opening of blessing. And I would like to summarize some two or three points about it and then we pray together. One, uh, we need to go to some, we need to exhaust the chance of full potential. Exhaust. I always know that every person who lives, you sense a potential in you. If the Holy Spirit resides in your heart and you pray deeply, the Holy Spirit removes all limitations and you are able to detect, to discern the fullness of, of, the, of what you should occupy. If you read Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5, you see even before Joshua and the people of Israel entered the promised land, God showed them or narrated or explained the boundary, the extent of the land. Yes, from Lebanon, Mediterranean Sea, River Utrecht, Tigris, Euphrates, going down to Negev Desert, God is saying, all this land belong to these people. And Joshua was commanded, cross over this Jordan and have all these people occupy, occupy the promised land. And one thing is, in Jesus' name, in my mind, I, all, I have the extent of blessing. I have a revelation of the blessings and the potential I have. Now, we will not live with that feeling without experiencing the manifestation. 
And in the name of Jesus, right now as I speak, I declare that God now touches me, touches you. And a process of full potential start. The full potential of ownership, full potential of marriage life, full potential of work, full potential of prosperity, full potential of gifting and talent. I say let that start now by the word of God in just Christ's name. Another thing is raising a faith. If you read in the book of First John chapter 5 verse 4, the Bible says, that is First John chapter 5 verse 4. The Bible says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Hallelujah. There is a kind of faith in Jesus that makes a believer overcomer of the world. You've lived learning away. You've lived like you always withdraw. But there's kind of boldness. If you read the book of Acts chapter 4 verse that one, Bible says the disciples instead of running away from threats, they prayed that God endorsed them with the power for full boldness and never run away. And Bible says, they were baptized again with the Holy Spirit. This time not the issue of speaking in tongues. This is now anointing for full boldness. And Bible says, they give witness of the resurrection of Christ with great grace and great uh, power. That is very important to know that God would like us to have uh, would like before you grow older, before you live on so much, whatever potential of faith, potential of gifting, potential of vision, potential of performance exists in my heart and your heart. Be now exhausted and we become, and we find ourselves becoming all what you feel and all God spoke about us in just Christ's name. Another thing is building the faith that overcomes. I know if we pray and pray, you walk out of church door to overcome the world in business, to overcome the world in righteousness, to overcome the world in decision making, to overcome the world with your gift and talent, I say I bless you all, whoever is observing or watching, now as you rise up and you go to the world, I say be overcome in finances, overcome with ideas, overcome with performance, overcome in your race of life, overcome, overcome. You are born of God and God can only produce overcomers for God, you never bow to man. That's very important in Jesus Christ's name. I know whenever you pray, let me explain to you something. Whenever you pray deeply and you're literally waiting for God to touch you, you discover the touch, the anointing that comes, make you a warrior. You don't fear again. You feel like walking around and not fearing any man. It's good that the anointing we, we get from God make us overcomers. Overcomers of the world. Another thing very important is uh -huh, assurance. Word of assurance. The Bible is very clear. Jesus always gives us word of assurance in battle and life. If you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when the Spirit of God descended during the time of war, as Jehoshaphat led uh, Judah, yeah, she said, the war does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And God said, you just need to start and sing the right phrases, and you see enemies be overcome. Now, that's how God works if he takes over battles. That's how God works. 
And Jesus gave assurance. In chapter Matthew 28, the last verse says, And I am with you always. I'm with you always. If you start from verse 18, it says, All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye and make disciples. Teach them to obey all that which I commanded you. And I'm with, I'm with you always till the end of time. It's important by the grace of God. Gain favor with God. Confirm the favor. I always believe there's what we call favor. What is favor? Favor is something that happens in our life. When our lives agree with God, when our lives are in God's purpose, we find God doing things beyond ordinary. We find God operating with anointing in our lives. Things happen beyond what we think. We do, you know, you, you just find God doing things that you just thought about them and God will do them. And it's good to discover in the name of Jesus how God's favor works through and in you. And when you discover that, keep the favor. Walk in the favor. Keep it. Live in it within its boundaries. Do not entangle yourself. Do not mix yourself. If you know how God uses you, if you know how God, uh, the favor that is bestowed on you, the favor that is bestowed on me, I should run the tactics, godly tactics of keeping the favor and the glory of God. And it's very important when we know that. In just Christ's name, live responsible life. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15, we be sober. Do not waste time. Redeem time, for the days are evil. It's good to live a responsible life with no, with no regrets. Yes. Live maximumly. Live maximumly. If it is prayer, pray maximumly. If it's preaching, preach. Preach maximumly. If it is, do not live a life whereby whatever we see from outside it's not who you are from inside. Let the inside and outside agree. Let your mind, your heart, and everything be put before God until they all agree. If God says I'm blessed, all, all things in my system, body system and mind, should be forced to agree. Even if you feel like your body is tired, force your body to agree with the direction in which the Holy Spirit is going. The Lord you bless us in Jesus Christ's name. Another thing is receiving the second touch. Now, second touch in the Bible has several aspects. One, the second touch comes when, let's see something in the scriptures. If you go to Mark chapter 9 verse 17, and then verse 24 to 29, the disciples had failed Cast out a demon. And they went to Christ and asked, Jesus, why did we fail? Christ said, because of unbelief. And later he said, such a demon cannot come out unless by prayer and fasting. One thing I want to declare about second touch is going to God so that he can rectify. He can cause you to perform. Lord, I tried, I failed. Lord, what do I need to do? Where, what, why did I fail? And the Lord will definitely guide you. Another thing is, uh-huh, is going deeper in what we call understanding the mysteries or secrets of the kingdom. That is Mark chapter 4 from verse 9 to 11. Christ had already preached about the parable of the Sarah. And he walked away. But the 12 disciples, plus close associates, those who were around him, went after him when he was alone and asked, Jesus, what did you mean by the parable of the sour? And Christ said, you people who have come back for understanding, you have right to know the mystery of the kingdom. Part of the blessings that flow in people's life 
are mystery of the kingdom, are people who followed God until God confirmed them. It's important to be receive the second touch whereby God gives you whatever he had said, whatever you have always been seeing or hearing, now God gives you a clear understanding about it and you are able to become better. Clear understanding. You've heard about people going to China to import things. God gives you clear touch about it and you realize, ah, I'm also to able to do that. You've always had people put up structures, buildings, and God touches you and you find yourself doing such a thing. God is able to bless us. Another thing, Another way of second touch is what happened to Cain. Cain gave an offering that was not accepted. Neither was he as a person accepted. If you see that in Genesis chapter 4. But if you check the scriptures, God gave Cain a chance for second touch. He said, Cain, if you repent, thinks you're okay. But he rebelled. Always, always when God has grace to give you chance to repent, to rectify, take that chance. Take it. Rectify. It could be. Um, it's an opening to blessing. Another thing is clear sight. Clear sight. In, in Mark chapter 8, verse 22, 23, the man, blind man in Bethsaida, Bethsaida Christ touched him twice. The first touch, he, he said, I see people walk like trees. The second touch, he said, I see everything clearly. I believe in all my heart. There is always this touch that causes things to be done clearly and causes us to see things clearly. Yes, Christ touched him the second time and he said, now I see everything clearly by God's grace. Yes, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, when Elisha was under attack by Syrian army, and his servant said, no, Elisha, we are dying. But God said, Lord, but Elisha said, those who are on our side, that other army, not we too, the other army from heaven is greater than what you see, than what, than they that are on their side. You know, Elisha could see the Syrian army had the backing of demons. And Elisha had the backing of the burning powerful angels from the throne. And he said, no, I can see both sides. And Elisha would say, those who are on our side are more and they are greater than they that are on their side. And Elisha did not say, they are, those who are on our side are greater than Syrian army. They are greater because the what battle, the weapons that Elisha was using were spiritual. And when Gehazi could not understand, comprehend, Elisha said in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, Lord, touch his eyes that he may see. And he was able to see the armies of heaven surrounding Elisha. Second touch in business, second touch in, in family. Second touch in healing. Second touch in performance. Second touch in doing things so that things can be perfected and we can see everything clearly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree in my life and the life of all people an opening for clear blessing from today. My God, let it start until your glory is revealed and all people you know that the living God is on our side. In Christ we pray.